Hello, my dear students, and welcome to the terminating chapter in this module, the electronics module 20 ECE056. As we agreed from the beginning of the journey, we have four chapters in this course, starting with operational amplifiers, and then we have and then we uh, have joined together the BN junction dies, the moves with, and now it's the final station in our journey, which is the bipolar junction transistor or the PVT. As usual, and typically as we did for the MOSFET, we are going to uh, divide this chapter into two parts. In the first part, we will start with an overall conceptual view, just a very quick flashback to what you have already learned in your solid state electronic course. Again, this is just what we need in order to continue circuits. Then we go to the DC analysis part where we are going to investigate the you know, operation of the bipolar junction transistor or the BGT under different schematics under a DC supply. Then in the second part, typically as we did for most, we, we are going to the smooth signal modeling or what's called the AC circuits of the BGT. So this is the strategy, how we are going to tackle the bipolar junction transistor. Now, please let me start training my presentation slides and start with you the final chapter in this course, bipolar junction transistor. Okay, let's now start and let's first start to remember together what is the bipolar junction transistor. Okay. The bipolar junction transistor is a form of a two diode junction. We have what's called the NPN transistor, which have a 3D schematic like that. And this is a circuit element. You can differentiate between NBN and PNP by recognizing the direction of the current. So in NPN, the direction of the current is going from the collector and terminating to the, to the emitter. This is a collector terminal. This is a metro terminal, and this is a pins terminal. However, for the PNP, we have a vice versa where the current is flowing from the emitter and terminating in the collector. Again, we have the three, three terminal device. As we typically did for the most, we are going to consider the NBN in our current study in this lecture. However, everything can be easily reflected by some sort of analogy to the PNP structures. Okay. So let's turn back to solid state electronics. When we discuss together the concept how to make a carrier transport in the bipolar junction transistor. And we have found together that whenever you have the emitter base junction in the forward bias and the base collector bond junction in a reverse bias, then electrons can flow from the emitter to the collector in this direction. As as far as this emitter base junction is a, PN, is a forward, so electron can flow from the end to the P. And then the, the electrons, once the electron reaches the base, they will find this drift of voltage or drift of potential. So electron will going to drift to reach the collector. So when electron is flowing from the emitter to the collector, then the current is flowing from the collector to the emitter. Again, we already defined the current as the reverse direction for the movement of electrons. Accordingly, we have a current that is flowing from the collector to the emitter due to the flowing of the electron from the emitter to the collector. But herein you should stop me and said, okay, we also have another current because once you make this matter based junction as a forward junction, then you should also expect holes to flow from the base to the emitter, from the p-type to the n-type. Accordingly, in this active mode, we have two types of current. We have electrons moving from the emitter, passing through the base, reaching the collector, creating a current from the collector to the emitter. And we also have a movement of hold that's moving from the base to the emitter and creating a current, which is the same direction because this is holes. So creating a current from the base to the, to the emitter. So we, we are going to call them the collector current and the base current. So the collector current is an electron current in the NBN transistor flowing from 
or due to the movement of the electron from the emitter to the case. And the base current is a whole current in the NB and transistors, where this is a current due to the movement of hold from the base to the emitter. Let's now start to describe this. So the overall current flowing in a transistor, or what we can call the emitter current, is a collection or the, is the addition of two currents. The first current is the current flowing from the, the collector to the emitter due to electron, which is IC. And the second current is a current flowing from uh, base to uh, uh, collector, uh, sorry, from the base to the emitter, which we call it. Before proceeding, actually, my dear students, that's why we call bipolar junction transistor a bipolar. The word bipolar, which is two types of polarity, this is simply because the current flowing in the transistor is due to electrons and holes. Against what we have learned in MOSFET, because in MOSFET, current is flowing is only due to one carrier. In the n channel MOSFET, the current is flowing only due to electrons. And the, in the p channel MOSFET, the current is flowing only due to holes. So this is one of the main uh, maybe uh, ways to classify between MOSFET or to distinguish between MOSFETs and digital. As you can see, and based on maybe your solid state background, you can understand that the doping in the emitter usually is higher than the doping in the base. So you should expect that I current or collector current or IC should be somehow much greater than IB because the source of this IC is this doping of electrons in the matter. However, the source of this IP is the whole doping in the base. This relation is linked by a very important coefficient called beta. Beta is simply the relation between IB and IC. And you should expect a high beta. Normally, beta is a range of 99 to 100. That means that the base current is 100 times less than the collector current following this equation. Simply by substituting from this equation to this one, you can get, first, this is what's called the common emitter current gain. We, we, we call the common emitter current gain. I, I, actually, I will describe this in details why we call this a common emitter current gain, but it is simply because now the relation in the between the base and the collector, so the emitter is the common terminal between the base and the collector, so that's why we call it the common emitter current gain. So this is beta, which is a common emitter current gain. Okay. By dark substitution, you can get this relation saying that IE equals IC plus IC over beta, or simply I, IC equals beta over beta plus one times I. And here you can define another terminal, which is alpha. So you can see IC equals alpha times IE. And simply speaking, we will call this the common base current gain, because now the base is the, is the common terminal, and you are comparing the collector current to the master state. So, now we have two important terminals related to the BGP. The first is beta, which is the common emitter current gain relating the base current to the collector current. And typically this beta is very large, I mean 100, for example. And the second is alpha, which is the common base current gain. And simply, whenever beta is large, you can say that alpha would be approximately equal to one because it's 100, for example, if, it's B, if beta is 100, so you have 100 over 101, which is somehow very close to 1. That's why you should expect alpha to be very close to it. As a circuit schematic, this is again the circuit schematic for the bipolar junction transistor or the BGT, where we have the base, the emitter, and the collector. Again, you can know that this is an NBN transistor whenever you find the current flowing from the collector to the emitter. So this is a sign to know that from the schematics that this is an NBN transistor. Okay, and this is a set of equation we use. Now, as we did with the MOSFET, if you remember, when we start, we, when we start to replace uh, the, the transistor by a current dependent sources, if you remember, we are going to do something very similar to this here. So we have very two famous schematics for BGT. The first one is actually based on this equation. This equation says that the current in the collector 
is dependent on the current of the emitter by factor alpha. Accordingly, you can make this relation. You can say that if this current equals to IE, which is the current flowing in the emitter, and this is IB, then the current flowing in the collector is what we can call a current dependent current source. So it's a current source, which is called the RC. Its value depends on another current, which is IE, by a factor called R. So this is the first way where you can demonstrate this model. We call this model a common base model because now you are making a relation between the collector current and the emitter current with a common base contact, so or a com common base terminal. So this is what we can call the common base configuration. Accordingly, we can have another model based on this equation by doing this. This is a base current. This is a matter current. Now the input is a base current and the output is a collector current, which is dependent on the base current by the, fa the, by the factor beta. So whenever the base current increase, your collector current will increase by this factor, which is beta. Of course, here you have a die and here you have a die just to ensure that there is no reverse direction because here current is flowing from the collector to the, to the base, uh, to, sorry, from the collector to the emitter. And here current is flowing from the base to the emitter. So you are just uh, ensuring a one directional current flow. That's why we have this dot, which is you can, you can consider as an ideal dot. So it's just a short circuit whenever the dot is full. So these are the two models where you can deal with your BGT either in the form of a common base configuration. So your input is the, uh, in, is a matter current and your output is a collector current with an factor alpha, which is again very close to one, or you can have your input is a base current and your output is the uh, collector current with a factor beta, where beta is somehow a large number. So what about the different region of operation? What about the ID curve? Again, as I mentioned, we are flowing, following the same procedure we have implemented with the MOSFET. So we have something like this IV characteristic. If you remember, I start this discussion with considering an assumption that the base emitter junction is a forward and the base collector junction is a reverse. So in this configuration, we call this, if you remember, what we call an active mode, which is, by the way, the most famous mode for the operation of the BGT. So this mode occurs when the matter base junction is forward and the base collector function is reverse. Whenever you have these conditions, then it's a um, active mode operation. However, and based on our understanding in the solid state electronics course, we have determined together that we have another region of operation. It is very simple to think about it. This P, uh, NBN junction is simply two dots. You can consider it as you have a, a matter base dot, which is at NP junction, and you have another base collector dot. So these are two PN, PN junctions. Simply, each PN junction can be either forward or reverse. Accordingly, you can say that you have four different combinations. Reverse, reverse, forward, forward, reverse, forward, forward, reverse. Here we consider one combination out of these four combinations. When we consider the emitter base junction as a forward junction and the base collector junction as a reverse junction. However, logically speaking, we can have, or we can operate in the three other configurations. So herein, you can find this table where we illustrate all the region of operation. Again, the active region is still the most famous one whenever the matter base junction is forward and the collector base junction is reversed. However, you can have another region of operation. The second famous one is what's called the saturation region. And if you recognize the difference between the saturation region and the, for and the active region, actually the difference is mainly here, as you can see. In the saturation region, the 
uh, in actually in both the active region and in the saturation region, in both the emitter base junction is full. However, the main difference is the collector base junction. Whenever the collector base junction is reversed, and this is the active, whenever the collector base junction is full, then this is an or this is an uh, a reverse. Uh, uh, this is a reverse binary. So, what we are going to do now is just we are going to explore how we can make this two junctions on the circuit schematic either active or saturation or maybe a cutoff. How we can make this? So now let me turn to my whiteboard and start with you some configuration on how we can adjust the operation of a BGT to be working in the active mode, saturation mode, or a cutoff mode according to the application we need. Okay, so now what we are going to do is that we are going to demonstrate how you can control the region of operation of your BGT by varying the binding condition. Okay, so let's start by plotting the schematic or just catching the schematic for our BGT. So we have something like this. This is, as I mentioned, it's an NBN transistor because the direction or the arrow is going from the collector to the emitter. So this is a collector and this is the emitter and this is the bit. And in order to make sure that we are understanding well, let's remember the doping. So this emitter is an n, 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 n type. This base is an p type, and this collector is an n type. Remember, my dear students, we have two junctions. We have the base uh, emitter junction. This is the first BN junction, and we have the base collector junction, which is the uh, uh, the second PN junction. These are the two PN junctions we have. Let's say, or let's start with the active mode, for example. I need to manage to have my most, uh, my BGT, sorry, to work in the active mode. What should I do? Okay. So, the conditions for active mode is to have your collector, sorry, your base emitter junction in the forward bias. So the first is to put this in a forward bias. How we can make this in a forward bias? If you remember from your from your PN junction lecture, I'm quite sure that you studied well, that in order to make a junction, a PN junction in a forward bias, what you are going to do is to connect the P terminal to a positive and the N terminal to the negative, knowing that this voltage drop should be greater than the building potential of the bias, which is what we call the V node or the V building. So simply let's assume that this V building is for example, 0.7 voltage, which is a very normal case whenever you have a silicon material, silicon PN junction. So what you are going to do now, or in order to make this base emitter junction in the forward direction, then what you are going to do is simply connecting here, a positive terminal of a battery, and this is a negative terminal, and you will connect this here. So now the negative terminal is connected to the emitter, which is the N type. The positive terminal is connected to the base, which is a P type. And the value, for example, is 0.7. So, yeah, so that you ensure that this is, is, this is a forward bias. So in order to manage, we will consider this emitter as our ground terminal. Now, we would like to make this base, collect, base collector junction, we, are, we would like to make it reverse because again, this is the combination for an active mode operation. So in order to make this reverse, what should you do? This is simply mean reverse is the reverse direction of an active. So you have to have a positive terminal connected to the N and a negative terminal connected to the B. Or in other words, the voltage applied to the N should be greater than the voltage applied to the B. So the voltage applied to the collector should be greater than the voltage applied to the base. So you can make it simply by inserting a battery like this. We will call it VCC. 
And let's put for VCC, for example, equals to 10 volts. So as far as this is 10 and this is 0.7, so the voltage applied to the collector is greater than the voltage applied to the base, and this junction is reversed. And simply, you are working now in what's called the active mode because the base emitter junction is, a, is forward and the base collector junction is a reverse. So this is the first case. And now your MOSFET is operating in what's called a, 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 a active mode or an a active mode. Okay, perfect. So now you can understand how you can bind your BGT to work in active mode. By the way, this is the most famous, again, this is the most famous configuration for the most, uh, for the BGT. Most of the time, in most of the problems, you will find a schematic like this, but we still have another configuration. Let's see how we can, for example, turn this BGT to work in the saturation mode. And please remember that in the saturation mode, what you are going to do simply is that you would like to have these two junctions both in the forward direction. This is already in the forward, so you have to turn this to be also in the forward direction. How shall we do it? Okay, so again, this is our BGT, as you can see, my dear students. Our target now is to turn this BGT to work to be in that situation. Again, to make this BGT in the situation, what you are going to do simply is to make these two PN junctions in the forward box. In the active mode, we already have one junction forward, which is this junction. So what we are going to do is just we are going to repeat the same collection because we still need this base and metal junction to be forward. Accordingly, and again, this is a ground, and this is, let's say, 0.78. So now you have 50% of the task. The base and metal junction is a forward because the voltage on the base, which is the P type, is greater than the voltage of uh, on uh, uh, of the emitter, which is the M type, by the building potential, which is 0.7. Okay, now your task is to make this base collector junction a reverse, a full junction. In order to make this base collector junction now, you should have the voltage on the base greater than the voltage of the collector, which is Again, it's what we did here. Here, we were playing to have the voltage of the collector greater than the voltage of the base. So we make this 10 voltage and this 0.7, so this is a reverse junction. However, here we have the collector voltage should be smaller than the base voltage. Here, the value we are seeking for is normally from 0.4 to 0.5. I mean to make this base greater than the collector by about 0.4 to 0.5. This is enough to operate in the saturation. So what you are going to do simply, my dear students, is that your voltage here, your voltage connected to the collector will not be 10 volts, of course. It will be something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 voltage. So now is if, if this 0 0.2, and this is 0.7, for example, then the junction is forward because the voltage on the P type is greater than the voltage on, on the N type, or the voltage of the base is greater than the voltage of the M. Uh, sorry, the voltage of the collector. I'm sorry. Again, the voltage on the base, which is P type, is greater than the voltage of the collector, which is M type. So this now turned to be a forward bias junction. And of course, this is a forward bias, then you are looking the situation. As you can see, the voltage on the collector is the key parameter affecting the operation. When this voltage is high, then it's an active mode. When this voltage is low, then it's a saturation mode. Herein we have what's called, my dear students, a VCE SAT or the saturation VCE voltage. Okay, so how we can reflect this in our IV code, how we can distinguish between the active mode operation and the, uh, uh, the saturation mode operation in our IV code. Let's see, let's turn back 
to our uh, PowerPoint stuff. Okay. As you can see, our IV characteristic curve is plotted between the IC or the collector current, again at the VCE, which is the voltage between the collector and the emitter. And as I just described, the main difference between having a situation mode and having an active mode is simply the value of the VCE. If this value of VCE is large, I mean, it is the collector voltage is greater than the base voltage, then this base collector junction is turned to be reversed. And accordingly, you are in the active mode, which is again, the most wide mode for a BGT. However, for very small values of, of, v, of VC, whenever VC is very small, as I mentioned, for example, the OP2 voltage, then you are working in the saturation region. So the saturation region is just limited for a very sl small values for the collector emitter uh, uh, value or the collector emitter voltage drop VC. This is simply how you can do it. Of course, we have another interesting region, which is the cutoff region. Whenever VPE is smaller than 0.7, so no current will flow and the and your transistor will be turned off. So as you can see, the common factor between active mode and saturation mode is to have this junction forward. Whenever this function is reversed, this is a cutoff mode. Of course, we have another mode, which is a reverse active mode, but this is actually is rarely a used mode. So we are focusing mainly on the active mode, saturation mode, and the cutoff mode. Okay, good. As I mentioned previously, we can work with the BGT in three main famous configurations. What we call the common emitter configuration, whenever your input is the emitter and the output is a collector, or what's called the common emitter configuration, which is the most famous configuration, whenever you have an input emitter and the output collector. And if you remember, in this case, we have what's called the beta as a factor, because this is IB and this is beta times IB. So this is the gain factor here is beta. However, the gain factor here is alpha, whenever you have IC and alpha times IC, or IE and alpha times IE. And finally, there is, this is the most unfamous one, which is a common collector configuration to have the input from the base, the output from the emitter. These are the three different configurations, but most of the time we, we will be on the area of these two first configurations, the common base and the common emitter. Okay. Now, as we did in our previous lecture with MOSFET, what we are going to do now is just, we are going to solve three examples dealing with the bipolar junction transistor in the DC format under a DC box. So this is the first example. Analyze the shown circuit to determine all the known voltages and branch currents, assuming beta equal 100. Here we have four voltage applied to the base. And then we have, this is the base, of course, this is the emitter. We have a resistance connected to the emitter, which is 3.3 kilo ohm. We have a 4.7 kilo ohm connected to the uh, collector RC. And we have 10 voltage applied to the collector. From the first impression, you can easily recognize that your MOSFET is working in the active mode as far as you have a very high voltage connected to the collector. However, let's see how we are going to solve this problem together. So now I will return back to my slides, uh, or sorry, to my uh, whiteboard, and we start solving together this circuit. Okay, so this is the circuit we have. The base is connected to a four voltage uh, uh, power supply and the meta, uh, and this terminal is connected to the ground. The emitter is connected to a resistance 3.3 kilo ohm, and this is a 4.7 kilo ohm, and this is the voltage and beta equal. Okay, so the first, usually, when you are going to solve BGT problems, again, a constant procedure, regardless of the circuit. As you can see, you have two loops this one and this one. So simply, what you are going to do, my dear student, is that you are going to use KVL across these two loops. So let's start with the first loop, this loop. If you make a KVL equation you, for this loop, you will find, I will write it here, I think you can see it, okay? So negative four plus 
The voltage drop here is what's called the VPD. Plus, the current flowing here, which is IE times the 3.3K, this equals to zero. As you can see, again, this is negative four, the VPE plus IE times 3.3K equals to zero. Now, how we can solve this equation? We have two unknowns actually in one equation. Here, you have to make use of your understanding. First, this transistor should be on. And in, in order to make this transistor on, then this base emitter junction should be forward. So I can say that this voltage is equal 0.7, which is a minimum voltage needed to operate. So now negative four plus 0.7, it's now negative four, negative 3.3. Accordingly, you can say that IE equals to 3.3 over 3.3K. So IE equals to one milliampere. So this is the first equation, or this is the first unknown that you can pick it up very easy by just assuming that your VGT is working and the voltage drop is 0.7 voltage. And now the unmetered current is equals to one milliampere. Okay, so knowing the unmetered current, how can we determine other branch current? Or are we able to determine other branch current? Let's see. Now I, I found that this current, the current flowing in the matter is one milliampere. Can I calculate the base current and the, and the collector current? Of course I can, because you know that IC equals alpha times IE. But you can tell me, I don't know alpha. No, you know it, because alpha equals to beta over beta plus one, if you remember. And you know beta, that beta is 100. So it's 100 over 101. Most of the cases, I ask you, please, don't make life complicated. It's 100 over 101. So you can say alpha is approximately equal to one. I mean, IC is approximately equal to IE, and that's all, you don't need to investigate it more. So the current flowing here is typically the same one milliampere. What about the current flowing in the base? I know it, how? I base equals to I collector over beta. So if this is 100, uh, 1 milliampere, and this is 100, so the current flowing in the base is 0 0.01 milliampere. And that's all. So now you in a very easy manner, you calculate the current flowing in the emitter, the current flowing in the base, the current flowing in the collector. You have only one unknown now, which is VCE, or the voltage drop between the collector and the emitter. You can pick up this VCE by doing a KVL in this loop. Let's do that. Let's make a KVL here. I'm sorry that the circuit now is very crowded, but you will used to have such schematic whenever you are solving. So whenever you make this KVL, you will find that you have negative 10, which is this voltage, plus I C times is a 4.7 K, this resistance. Then you have this voltage drop, which is plus VCE, plus I E times is 3.3 K. Okay, you know that I E and I C are, are the same and both are one milliampere. So you have only one unknown in this equation. This negative 10 plus 4.7 plus 3.3. So 4.7 plus 3.3, then we have eight negative and then VCE equals two voltage. My dear students, is this an acceptable VCE? You should say yes. Why, why, why I ask you the question, is this an acceptable VCE? Because now we are solving, no, assuming that our transistor or our VGT is working in the active mode. So in the active mode, the voltage on the collector should be greater than the voltage on the base to make this junction 
à, euh, à un euh, matter based junction. Oh, sorry, to make this junction a reverse junction. So now you have this VCE equals to two voltage. So what about the voltage of this point? Can we calculate the voltage of this point? Of course we can. Of course we can calculate the voltage of this point. How we can calculate the voltage of this point? This point, the voltage here is well known. How? Because we have one milliampere flowing in 3.3 K. So the voltage here is 3.3. And the voltage here is greater than this voltage by two. So the voltage here is 5.3. So this is 5.3 and this is four. So the voltage here is greater than the voltage here. Then your most, your VGT is working in the active mode. So you can know or you can distinguish the active or you can validate, let me say, that you are working in the active mode by simply calculating this point voltage, which is the collector voltage, and comparing the collector, collector voltage with the base voltage, which is typically what we did now. So this is the first example we have. A very basic circuit. The procedure starts with having KVL here. Then we got this equation. We assume that our transistor is on, so VPE equal 0.7. We calculate IE, and then we say IE equals IC. That's perfect, so we know IC. And IB equals IC over beta. Then we know IB as well. Then we make a final KVL to calculate the VCE, and we get the voltage VCE. And finally, we calculate the voltage of the collector, and we make sure that the voltage of the collector is greater than the voltage of the base so your MOSFET is working in that. This is simply what we did. So let's now go to the second example. Then let's turn to our uh, PowerPoint again, yes, so this is the first, or no, yes, this, uh, yes, this is the first example we saw with together. Now let's turn to the second example. Yeah, this example, okay. Analyze, again, the same, analyze the short circuit, uh, so as, uh, analyze the short circuit to determine all the node voltage and the bench constant, assuming beta equals 100. Here we have a positive six volt applied to the base. We have the 3.3 kilo ohm, we have 4.7 kilo ohm, and we have 10 voltage. If you have a very quick look, you will find that it's typically the same line. The first question or the first problem, except instead of having a four voltage applied to the base, now we have a six voltage applied to the base. So it's typically the same. So let's see how we can solve that. What is the difference between this circuit and the previous ones? So I will return that to my whiteboard for you. Okay, so as you can see, this is our circuit. Now it's typically the same, same as the previous example. So the voltage here is this voltage. And as we said that the voltage drop here in order to make this most, uh, sorry, this VGT on should be 0.7. This is a very important starting point. So if this is six and this is 0.7, then this is 5.3. So this is 5.3 and this is 3.3. So you can just divide this voltage by this resistance to calculate the emitted terms or IE. So you can simply find IE, I will remove now the value for IE. Yeah, it will be 1.6 milliampere. So IE will be 1.6 milliampere. Again, what I did is that I start with a six. Voltage drop between the base and the metal should be 0.7 as far as this transistor is working. Otherwise this transistor will be up. So six minus 0.7 will be 5.3. 5.3, this is the voltage, the resistance is 3.3K, so you just divide it, this by this, you will get 1.6 milliampere. And as we mentioned together, if this 1.6 milliampere, then this is, will be also 1.6 milliampere, because the collector current and the emitter uh, current are equal, then what you are going to do is that you are going to calculate VCE. So how we calculate VCE? It's very easy. Now this is 1.6, and this is 4.7 uh, kilo ohm. So the voltage drop across this resistance is simply 1.6 times 4.7, as you can see. So just so here it's 7.52 voltage. 
this is 7.5 voltage. This is the voltage drop across the uh, uh, this resistance. Now the voltage of this node is 10. Then the voltage of this node is simply 10 minus this number. Will be 2.48 volts. Okay, now there is an issue. Why there is an issue? Because simply, if you calculate now, you will find that the voltage here, which is 2.48, is now smaller than the voltage here, which is 6 volts. If you remember, we are using this equation, which is IC equals. Uh, uh, um, beta times IB and uh, uh, IC equals alpha times IE and all this stuff is related to the active mode. But now your mode, your VGD is not in the active mode because to be in the active mode, you should have a voltage on the base greater than the voltage of the collector. So again, I'm sorry, the voltage on the collector should be greater than the voltage of the base to make this junction reverse. But, but now, this is 6 voltage and this is 2.48 voltage. So you, the voltage on the base is greater than the voltage on the uh, uh, collector. So this function is reversed. As far as this function is, uh, sorry, this junction, I'm sorry, this uh, junction is four volts. As far as this junction is four volts, then this is a saturation mode, not an active mode. Because in the active mode, you should have this function, this junction reverse. You should have the voltage on the collector greater than the voltage on the base. But now the voltage on the base is greater than the voltage on the collector. So this most is, is, so this BGT is not in the active mode. This is in the saturation mode. What should we do? So let's plot it plot it again. This is ground and this is six voltage. Of course, even in the saturation mode, this is on. So this assumption is still valid, my dear students, because in both saturation and active, both they are both on. So now this is 5.3 and the current here is 1.6 milliampere. So this is okay because this is independent on it's an active or in saturation. Now this is voltage ten volts. How we can solve? We, we, we are now, we are not able now to use the equation IC equals alpha IE because it's no longer active. So how we are going to solve it? The key here is what's called the VCE sign, which is equals to open to voltage whenever your voltage is in saturation. So if this 5.3, then this will be 5.5. And as you can see, 5.5 is still smaller than six. So this is a saturation. Now this is 5.5 and this is 10 and this resistance is 4.7. So simply IC will be equals to uh, 10 minus 4.7 over, uh, sorry, 10 minus, I'm sorry, 10 minus 5.5 over 4.7. 10 minus 5.5 over 4.7. Again, the 5.5 is, is calculated from here. This is 5.3, voltage drop on the VCE SAT is 0.2, then this is 5.5. And then you can calculate, I say, I'll show you. It will be 0.96 milliampere. So now you can see that my distance is different between the active mode and the saturation mode. When this voltage was full voltage, so this BGT work in the active mode, IC and IE were typically equal or nearly equal, 1.6 and 1.6. But when we increase this voltage to be six voltage, then the MOSFET turned, uh, or the BGT again, turned to be in the saturation mode accordingly. The current in the emitter kept to be 1.6, but the current in the collector becomes 0.96 milliampere. This is the effect of the saturation mode, my dear students you can easily calculate it here. So let's go to another example. So this is circuit number two. So let's go to this third example. And so yeah, this is the third example. Actually, this is a gift in the exam. If I give you this circuit in the exam, you should 
thank God that this is a gift. Why this is a gift? Of course, we have to thank God all the time. Why this is a gift? Because simply the voltage on the base is zero. Whenever the voltage in the base is zero, then simply your transistor is turned off. So the current flowing is equal to zero, and that's all. You don't have current. IB, it, it, this is a reverse bias. This is a reverse bias. It's a kind of cutoff mode. The current flowing in the collector and the current flowing in the base is equal to zero because this is simply an open circuit. No current will flow. So this is a cutoff mode. So you can, you don't need to go to the whiteboard to solve. You don't need to invest. Once you have a grounded base and no other a bias condition for a base, so then your transistor is off. So now we have terminated the DC analysis for a MOSFET. Uh, sorry, for a BGT. I'm very sorry. Now we have terminated the DC analysis for a BGT. In the next part, the next week, my dear students, which will be our final part in this module, we are going to investigate together what is called the AC analysis for a BGT, which is something very interesting as we did with the mouse. Thank you very much for your concentration and see you next week with part number two with the AC analysis of a BGT. Thank you very much.